that's a lot of post back. Hello everyone, I've got a post bag video, yay! I've got loads of stuff from AliExpress, I've got bags of it, um, I've just not had time to go through and film it and show you all, uh, so I've got a lot to get through. It's probably going to end up being a two part series this one, uh, just because I've got so much to get through. Uh, I'll see how it go, uh, if it gets too long I'm going to cut it into two parts, uh, so you'll just have to come back uh, with anticipation and watch the second part. So as per normal, I've opened them up off camera and I'm going to go through them. I'm going to tell you what they are, uh, how much they were uh, and what I'm going to be using them for. If you've never used AliExpress before, use this as a chance to get something. Uh, it's really good. You can think of it kind of like the eBay of China. Uh, so you've got some dodgy sellers on there, but you've got a lot of good sellers and they're basically selling the same stuff. Um, all the guys in Shenzhen uh, market uh, basically got their own little stall on Aliexpress and they're trying to sell the same kind of gear that you can get on Amazon, get on eBay uh, and on stores that you, you get in the uh, Western markets. If you click through on one of the affiliate links, uh, it won't cost you anything, but I will get a little kickback of a couple of pennies if you purchase uh, something uh, via those links. It's literally a couple of pennies. It's very little for the, uh, the electronic components that cost so little. The commission on something so little is so little. But give it a go, buy something really cheap uh, and, and try it. You just gotta wait a few weeks, usually two to two, two to four weeks uh, for it to rock up. So don't expect anything quick. Uh, click through, buy something, forget about it. In a couple of weeks you go, ah, here it is, cool. But be warned, don't blame me if you become addicted to AliExpress and need to go on a AliExpress diet. So let's just dive in. See your lists. Oh my god, there's so much. Oh, that will do. So, people quite like uh, seeing what it is. This is adapter, not point one dollar. What are these? Uh -huh. These are SMD crystals. This is for some Oshpark little circuit boards that I want. There it is in fact. Crystal oscillator. And it's a 32 uh, kilohertz oscillator. SMD component and they are tiny. Good luck doing that. What's this one? Uh -huh. Ah, this is a DigiSpark clone, uh, 80, tiny 85 development board. Uh, I actually got my money back for this one because the listing showed it as an actual DigiSpark. Um, and it's a very small one, but when it came, it was a little bit bigger. And the way you can tell is this writing is 80, tiny 85, when it should say tiny 85. Uh, and the components are a little bit smaller. Um, have I got one? Yes, here it is. This is my one key keypad that I'm working on. Uh, 3D printed case, Cherry MX key. I pop it out. This is the one that I actually wanted and you can see it says Tiny85. This one is much larger and it didn't fit. And it says 80 tiny 85. So if you're buying DigiSpark clone uh, development boards, be careful because they're not all the same. Very well wrapped. It's in here somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh. These are reed switches, magnetic reed switches. Brian Locke to thank for this. Uh, he did a project where he used a re-switch and a magnet when you open a Zelda case, Zelda chest, uh, the circuit uh, became active and I was like, ooh, I could do with some of these. So yeah, thanks Brian. Don't know what they're going to be used for yet, but parts draw. Uh -huh. <laughs> Brian again. Um, this is a Bluetooth module, H, 
C06. Um, and again, from one of Brian's videos, which I will put up here somewhere. Um, you can basically flash the firmware on this very cheap Bluetooth module to turn it from a basic uh, transmitter receiver Bluetooth module into a HID HID device, uh, which basically turns it into a Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth keypad, Bluetooth mouse. It's up to you what you stick on the end of it. Uh, but yeah, you can get a, a HID Bluetooth controller, but they are very expensive. But these are like one pound, two pound something. So yeah, really cool. Check out Brian's video. And this is, oh, this is a tiny OLED. This is a 0.91 inch uh, white OLED. It's the thin version. You see, they're very tiny. These you see these in a lot of uh, watches and smart devices and things now. Very cool. Again, parts draw because it was so cheap. What are all these? Oh, these are all SMD components. And a flyer. Yes. All like that. So these are capacitors. I believe they are 0805 or 1206 capacitors, look like 1206 uh, SMD capacitors, a various mix. And these are MC73831s, uh, which you can't see, I believe they are tiny charge, lithium charge circuits, uh, which go with this uh, to create a lithium button charge circuit which is the plan. That'll be a future video. See more. Keep going. Got to get through them all. Oops. Hey, talk of the devil. So these are coin cell batteries, uh, but not the usual 2032s, these are lithium. And you see that LIR. So these are, sorry, not lithium, these, yeah, these are rechargeable lithium cells. So I've got a lot of little projects where they use little 2032 coin cells. And so I thought I'll get some rechargeable ones, see how good they go. And that goes with these. I'm going to make an actual lithium uh, LIR 2032 charge circuit. And here it is from Oshpark, straight from the mail. Uh, this is a coin cell uh, circuit charger. USB, stick it in. That's what she said. <laughs> you have your coin cell, that part, the MC73831, which goes there, uh, bunch of LEDs, capacitors. Uh, yeah, and you can charge up these. Very strange, it came in a pack of five, but it's left where there was a pack of six. It may, listen, may as well have been six, I don't know. Yeah. I like this seller. I will tell you this seller uh, in the description below. He's very good for SMD stuff. What are these? These are tiny little microcontrollers and they are Atmel 328Ps, SMD version. Um, they're so tiny you can barely read them. Uh, but again, a couple of projects where I want to solder the surface mount uh, an Arduino Atmel 328P. I've got a couple of these. Dead cheap. I think they're like a pound something each. <laughs> Deja vu. These are also two more Atmel 328P surface mount versions. Uh, I got it from two different suppliers just to see how quick they were and if they were different or the same. They looked the same. Yeah, more projects where I need, I need them. Oh, it's like Christmas this. 
that's a good seller on AliExpress. Magic M, that's the English version. And yeah, she's good. He, she, who knows. These are more SMD stuff. Oh yeah, these are uh, large capacitors. I forget the name of these. Tantalum, is that the ones? I believe so. Uh, this is for another Oshpart project uh, to go with other SMD stuff. This is, what are these? Oh yes, capacitors. These are 805 capacitors. So we've got 1206 and 805s that I need. Just a mix of different values. And these should be 1206 resistors. Yes. Let's get one of these guys out. Again, it's just a mixed bag of various values. You see, they are very tiny. Very cool. 7.5K, there you go. 510 mega ohms, 10 mega ohms, all sorts of different ones. Really good just to get a kit of these, just all sorts of different values. Right, so you've always got them in stock. Uh -huh, it's almost like I'm picking these out, not at random, which I am. Battery clips. Hey, have a guess where these go. In my coin cell battery. These are through hole ones, which are very interesting. You can get SMD and through hole ones and you solder them up. There you go. Pretty cool. Quite expensive. Very expensive, but they're very, um, very solid. Very good. Got about 50 of these. 50, I think they were like three pounds something. So not expensive, but in AliExpress terms, they were really expensive. Uh -huh, more SMD. Wow, this is like SMD central. Bunch of tactile push buttons. Uh, these are actually for a specific circuit board. Uh, their footprint, it was the ones that had the additional ground pin. Let's see if I can get this out. So the SMD, they are, have a red switch, but they also have a, a central pin. You can see that, you might see that on a few switches. Uh, that is basically because it's got a metal casing and it grounds the metal case. It's connected to the case. So if you see a SMD pad for a switch and it has five pads, chances are it's just the ground, ground plane pad. Wow, these are tiny. Again, dead cheap. Link in the description below. few more, let's keep going. Ah, these tiny little pins. These are pogo pins. I want to make an ISP programmer where you just, uh, you don't connect to the board, you just put it up to the pins. And you need pogo pins, which are basically spring-loaded pins. Try and get these guys out. Oh my God, they're tiny. You can see that with my Monkey fingers. Focus. You push on the board and it makes an electrical contact, but it doesn't, it's not mechanically connected. I'm gonna make a, a circuit board, I think, for them. Wow, these are heavy. Wow, what are these? Oh, these are iron cores. Um, great big iron cores to make uh, inductors. Is that the word? For toroid inductors. And it's for a dual thief. Got a dual thief circuit. Uh, for one of my subscribers, uh, video up there. He sent uh, a care package all the way from the US. It had a dual thief in it. These are actually for that. Wow, the loads. But apparently, you could get them out of old fluorescent. Energy saving bulbs, and I've just smashed one. Yeah, yeah, just cracked one. Be careful with them, Stephen. Yeah, 